You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Ryan? Michael. I always say that. Ryan? Michael? Good to see you. Let's repeat it back. Yep. How are you? I forgot about ads and we had to do ads today. Yeah. I was like, kind of like, uh, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That's because I had a taffy. You've also got a large band-aid on your knee. Yeah. Softball, man. I made a major league caliber play. <laughs> yeah? Did you get him out? I'm not kidding. Like, I, I'm going to toot my own horn there for a second. My uh, The guys were just like, dude. Because I heard them talking about the play when I was sitting on the other side of the bench, like, dude, that play was like, <laughs> and I was like, yes. I mean, I, I, I made a couple of nice plays. I hadn't played in a while, and it was uh, we won by a run, and they had Ooh. the bases loaded at the end. Ooh. And here's what happened: I turned this double play to end the game, but they called him safe, and we ended up. They scored five more runs, and we barely won in that last inning. Ooh. And afterwards, I said to the ump, he goes. It was my bad, dude. I feel bad, but you guys won, so. I was like, oh, he admitted it. He admitted it. I go, we need computers. Oh, man. Yeah. And I uh, I picketed. I was, uh, you know, for That's sag all. and after. I went to, went to Paramount and uh, did that. Um, so that felt good seeing my other colleagues and people, you know, fighting for something that is is important. And, That's good. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I think it's like, I'm not going to get into it, but I think the rest of the world kind of views it as, oh, poor actors, they don't make enough money. And no. the fact is that 99% of actors don't even make $25,000, $50,000 a year. No, I know. And there's there's more stories coming out now about like, you know, what people are actually getting paid. <laughs> yeah. Like on my shows. Imagine guys like, like Netflix, you don't get residuals, they nope. get buyouts. Nope. And so it's, it's a lot of stuff. So I just, just get educated on it if you don't know about it. And uh, I certainly have educated myself on it a little bit. Because uh, it's, you know, but it, it happens all over the world. I mean, people working for these large conglomerates that um, are getting treated like shit, paid like shit, mm -hmm. and people are making billions. The top make billions. And I always came, you know, thought of the idea that, you know, if you're making money and someone's an integral part of your empire or whatever, reward them, call mm -hmm. them. It's it's just human nature. And uh, I just don't know what people need with $100 billion or even 10 million dollars uh you know if you're making a lot of money it's like uh you know share the wealth yeah share the wealth man it's it's by the way your employees are going to work harder for you they're going to mm -hmm. think feel that they're respected um and um this is something where the rich get richer and you know um it happens all over, all around the world it's not just with the hollywood driving down sunset there's a bunch of hotel workers are on strike well good well. yeah i hope they win it's, yeah because it, again, what are they getting around. paid? I know. I mean, if, if, if somebody profits $100 billion a year or $50 million a year, says, hey, we profited 50 million. How about I keep 40 and take that 10 million and give it to everybody else who's been working so hard? And the planet's still on fire. Come on, guys. The planet's on fire. Enough about, enough about. I thought about striking, but I got nothing to, I could I could pick at this, but that's really it. Yeah, what? <laughs> No, why don't you go with me one day? I got nothing to strike. Why don't you go with me? Don't you have to be part of the unions? Are they going to stop you from fucking walking with me? Probably not. No. I'm going to bring you a sandwich one day? I'll bring you a sandwich. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening. Great guest today. Um, and uh, I encourage you guys, if, if you like this interview, um, please stick around and uh, subscribe to the show. Write a review. It really helps the show. We've been doing this for years, and we just started doing better um and that's because of the the great team i have around me and um boy four years of just why am i doing this other than just i love the podcast <laughs> but um now it seems like this is this has been a pretty good year and i'm I'm grateful and um thank you westwood one thank you bryce thank you jason thank you ryan and uh you know it's just it's just it seems like we're actually going up a little you know, it's we're not at a plateau. We're not going down. We're going up a little. We're not skyrocketing by any means, but we're going up mm -hmm. the trajectory. So that's good. Um, also, if you want to visit the Inside of You online store, we've got so much cool merch. I just got the new Inside of You zip up jackets. They're freaking dope, and those are selling really well. Um, Sunspin, my band, is. Uh, playing saturday at 5 p.m pacific standard time virtually just go to sunspin.com get a ticket if you want to support the band if you haven't come it's a lot of fun it's prizes it's uh 
should we give you shout outs? We, we have, I have the big screen up. So I see all your names in your comments and we we're playing and we say, Oh, look, it's Milwaukee, John. What's up, dude. And there's prizes and zooms and, and you really support the band and we're trying to do another album. So thank you. You can also go to stage it.com S T A G E I T.com type in sunspin and get tickets 5 PM Pacific standard time. Um, Talkville, I know you guys, I don't really need to promote that. You guys know where that is. Inside of you podcast or a talkville podcast.com. Uh, you can get some signed stuff from me and Tom, uh, patron. I'll never forget, uh, patreon.com slash inside of you. And, uh, to help the podcast continue to stay afloat without the, uh, patrons, uh, we couldn't do the podcast and that's, that's. The biggest part of what I was telling you in the beginning that we're doing better because, you know, of these guys. Uh, the handles, Ryan, why don't you give us the handles? Uh, at Inside of You Pod on Twitter, at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Oh. Also, I'll be, I'm on the cameo, but I'll be uh, at conventions. Uh, Tom and I will be in Rhode Island in September, DC, Salt Lake City. Um, so get tickets to that. We do uh, an evening with Michael and Tom, and that's a blast we should be doing those events. So make sure you look for those tickets on Friday or Saturday nights. I think they are. Um, that's about it for all that jazz. Uh, my dog isn't pissing and shitting in the house as much. Mm -hmm. So that's good, but you have to be on top of him. Yeah. I mean, not on physically on top of him, but you have to be on, on top of it. Mm -hmm. You have to let him out still constantly. And mm -hmm. it's, but he's, uh, I love the little bastard, but he's, he's a challenge. He is a challenge. Uh, Rachel Bilson, she's got these podcasts. She's got a great body of work, and she was adorable. Rachel, if you're even listening to this, which you're probably not, adorable. Mm -hmm. She was. She's so smart and and fun and light, and she's got a great podcast, broad ideas that you have to listen to, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, she's a great guest. So why don't we just get into it? Why don't yeah. we just talk to and get inside of Rachel Bilson? It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Hey, folks. Wanted to highlight something important before today's episode. In case you weren't aware, myself and many of the guests are on strike alongside SAG, AFTRA, and WGA. Today's episode and any we air before the strike ends were recorded before it began. So this is just a heads up in relation to some for the topics we may discuss. If you want more info on the strike, visit SAGAFTRAStrike.org. Now let's get into it. Do you think coffee <laughs> is a date? Okay, my favorite movie of all time is called Just Friends. Have you seen it? No. Okay. Is that Ryan Reynolds? Yes, it is. Oh, all right. And in the movie, if you go out to lunch, let's say, it's a day date. They're like, a day date, that's friends. According to this movie, okay? Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's room there. It could be a date. But <laughs> I think coffee is an introduction. Th thank you. <laughs> I see that too. So you don't need to have a, a response back to them after the coffee if you don't want to. You just you don't have to go. Oh, this was great, and I have to. I mean, I don't respond need to, do to people after like sleeping with them the first night. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. Christ <laughs> on his throne. No, uh, I'm just funny. I'm just funny you are like funny. that. I think that I don't like calling anybody back ever. So what? you know, it's like the Irish goodbye, but like. I do the Irish goodbye. For sure. Uh, absolutely. I'm at something. I'm saying happy birthday, doing whatever. Yeah. And after that, and they start to, I start to just. You just like, yeah, you just slip on out. Yeah. You don't need to say goodbye to everybody. No. Oh my God. That is like my biggest. I don't like it. And I don't no. like the awkward, like, do I hug you? Goodbye. Like, do I have to? Like, you're like Seinfeld now. Do I hug you? <laughs> is this. Uh, well, is Larry this, David is the love of my is life. Is this the last time I'm going to see you? <laughs> yeah. Is this, are we friends? Are we, what is this? I do what think a lot here? like that. I have my own. I do too. Brain. I think we all have that little Seinfeld in us. Of course. It's just who actually is vocal about it. Yeah. Right. So I, I can't believe how, like, 
I never, have I ever met you? I don't know. I, you always do the safe thing like, oh, it's so good to see you. And then it covers it. No, that's I, what you said yeah. to me when I showed up. And I, in my head, I'm like, fuck, have I met him? No, I meant it's so good to see you. Right. Like, yes. not again. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see but you. But that is like a fair thing to do. Yeah. Especially in this business and you meet a ton of people and you see yeah, people. It's, it's a always safe like, way. It was really nice to see you. Nice to see you. I, I, I think you're right. I, I think right. that's important. I'm usually right. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Are you usually right? Yeah. Do you admit when you're wrong? Yes. It's accountability is a big thing. I just talked about this. But yeah, it's important to be able to admit when you're wrong. Really? And how do you go about it? Does it take a minute or do you immediately go, you know what? It depends on who I'm wrong. <laughs> it depends on who I'm wrong to. <laughs> uh, it's a powerful thing though. It's a powerful thing. To take you, accountability? Well, or? when you can look at somebody and say, um, you know what? My my bad. Let's Let's move on. That's on me. Yeah. My bad. And even if it's not on you and you take it, that pisses people off. Oh. Like if you're dating someone, you know what? It's my fault. Oof. Let's, that's, pass is that passive aggressive? Yeah. A hundred percent. It is. So yeah, I, I shouldn't like, do that. No, it's a dick move. You can't do is that. Is it a dick move? Yeah. But I just don't want to get in an it's argument. Passive it's like condescending. It's like, you know, no, you're right. Like, but if you, yeah, you can't do it. It's funny. There's so much like, you know, I, I, I talked to Rob, who, yeah. who you brought along yeah. today. Yeah, Rob yeah. Hollis, who started this whole thing with me years ago, and then he left me for Dak Shepard. But it's happened before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I told him, I said, this is a good career move. He knows a lot bigger celebrities and, you know, he knows <laughs> he has more money. Uh, you know, uh, you'll be near Kristen Bell. You should do this. It's better. And of course, now he's a millionaire. So, you know, and I'm <laughs> so it was just the right move. So really, you helped him. Is I there did. like a finder's fee? Yeah, uh, there should be. I thought right? maybe there would be something. <laughs> yeah. But there's not. But he's helping you in your new podcast. He is. Yes. Uh, broad ideas. Yes. Broad ideas. When I looked at the subject matter of this podcast <laughs> with Olivia Allen, yes. who's now an actress now, going off to do a movie. Yes. Um, she already got a movie. She decides to be an actress. And can you well, say actress? Well, she's always one of... Oh, gosh. Don't talk to me about what you can yeah, and can't fuck, say. But fuck. she has always wanted to act. And she did a few like small things when she was a lot younger. But now, in her 40s, she fucking landed a movie. I'm so proud of her. Good for her. Yeah. I know. But this podcast, I saw that you guys talk about, like what I, I like to talk about is mental health yeah, and how we deal with it. And it really helps people. There's so many people out there that, that listen and say, this podcast really saves me or helps me. or And I'm like, what? what how? And it's just by hearing people like you and, and just like get personal if you mm -hmm. do. And, um, but you are also talk about other shit, like, you yeah. know, like ghosts and yeah. like whatever, <laughs> which is, which is cool. I think we kind of get into everything here. Um, I never perceived you as someone that's like, oh, I bet that girl's really open and talks. I bet you weren't always like that. No, no, I definitely, I put my foot in my mouth many times since this broadcast, broadcast, sure, broad ideas, podcast. <laughs> it's a broadcast. Oh my God. That just dawned on me. You should have done broadcast. Dude, Change the name. Damn it. Broadcast. Fucking brilliant. Rob. <laughs> um, came with a better idea. Came up with a better idea. Right. Okay. Great. So, now you just summoned him. He's going to come. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. So I was, I've always been very private, you know, but there's certain things. And yes, I've put my foot in my mouth. Sometimes I'm joking around. Sometimes, you know, we'll talk about things that are pretty taboo and people don't think it's appropriate to talk. And I'm a firm believer, especially for women in particular, to have a safe space to talk about all these. I mean, men too. Yeah. You know? No, but yeah, Be both. Because there's so many things that people feel like, oh, is this weird? Or am I weird? Or or is this normal? And I think that it's just nice to be able to relate to people on another level. Absolutely. I mean, do you do you get so you have you had anxiety, like bad anxiety in your life or depression or have had to deal with any of that stuff? Well, for me, I was never, I never suffered from like depression or anything, but the past few years, you know, the pandemic and everything else and things in life, uh, it was new for me. So I've been dealing with that now in my older age. What, what is it about that? We, when we get older, it's like, I never had this shit. And, and never my, had it. You my, have it now? Well, I'm, I, uh, I, now it's better. I've yeah. been working on that yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's taken a while, but it's almost like my, theory is that when you're young your body can take a lot you can go play football with your friends and you rebound you can go drinking with your friends and you rebound and it's and it's easy because mm -hmm. you're young right and then the older you get the more you stress when we get older 
our bodies are like, no, fuck you. Oh yeah, fuck no. you. I can't take this oh, much stress. My knee has been saying fuck you for a month to me because I fell skiing. So you know, it's just you can't bounce back, I and mean, that's mentally too. I think it, I think you're onto something. Yeah, but have you ever had a full fledged panic attack? Yeah, but that's from like weed or something or a drug. <laughs> <laughs> my friend Tommy's like that. He's like, we just smoked pot, and he goes, he comes down the stairs, uh, and he said, he, he goes. He's from New Jersey, and he said he literally talks like this. Ryan, he talks like this. He's like, <laughs> and he's sweating. He goes, "Jesus Christ, I just like talked myself off a fucking ledge." I was. Uh, he sounds kind of like Irish. I, I guess. I guess so. He's from New York, or whatever. He's New Jersey. He's like, "You're fucking." <laughs> I just. I fucking was looking in my face in the mirror, and I'm like, "Get the fuck, stop! You're all right. You're not gonna die." <laughs> Freaking out. Yeah. But we can sometimes do that to you. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I not you like I'm good with weed. Like we have a good relationship um, and a very long one. But uh, <laughs> I, yeah, like it's if it's induced and you get in your head. But I, I have I had more. I've had more anxiety like in my older age for sure. Yeah. Plus, yeah. you have a child. I do have a child. How old's the child? She's eight. Eight years yes. old. She's awesome. If and you, yeah. If you hear an occasional squeak, it's my puppy. I know you just got a puppy, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie, who you said was a week old. Uh, I meant, yeah, I've had him all week. He's obviously I knew what you meant. We already, you know, yeah, we could already read you. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Uh, I have a daughter. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> but you have a daughter. But like how, look, it's hard enough to have a kid. Sure. But then when you're co-parenting. Yes. So you're not obviously married anymore. You're divorced. So you're single and you're, uh, you know, you're, you got work, you got podcasts, you got, you know, auditions, you got whatever roles you're doing. And you're taking care of your daughter. How do you how do you do that? I, I couldn't. I could. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> well, you don't. Even you don't have kids. I I don't have a child. You have two dogs. I have two dogs. Okay. As of now. As of now. As of now. Yeah. Do you want kids? I, I I don't think so. I mean I don't know. I mean look at the woman I'm with and I fall in love with her and she's like I, I and it feels right. Maybe I'd consider. But it's not like a big thing for you that you've always known you've wanted. I think I did. And I think that time kind of has, has passed. Yeah. It doesn't really work that way. I for can't guys, whistle. Though. You notice that two times I went. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's you? not there. Can you? Well, <laughs> yeah, not, <laughs> no, not, not so, good. so good. I had braces and it took it away from me. My daughter's an excellent whistler. Really? Yeah, I can't do that. Good for her. I know. Um, but the co-parenting. But the co-parent. Yeah, it's just, you know, uh, having a kid definitely every day of your life. You're like, OK, my kid's alive <laughs> you know <laughs> seriously no ser like you have these morbid thoughts of like all the things that could happen and that adds to the newfound anxiety that comes along with being older and raising a kid and every day you're like oh my god like they could be crossing the street you see all the the fucking news like everything that they put out there it's always the most horrendous story i don't watch it anymore well, yeah, I don't watch it, but like on yeah. Instagram or whatever right. it is, like it's, you're it's, scrolling it's, yeah, it's all... and it's all like this person died because they were walking across the street or like, you know, and it's all of that. So it just keeps feeding your fucking mind with this awful, you know, all these stories. I'm like, where's the, where are the positive ones? And it puts it in your head. So I'm constantly like, oh, fuck, this could happen. And like, there's nothing more important in the world than your child when you have one. So it's just becomes, everything is way more heightened because you're, you have this person that you're responsible for. Yeah, but is it hard to just deal with the other person and their schedules and they're like, you're not together anymore. So is it kind of weird? Have you gotten past that? Yeah, no, we we do really well. Well, that's good that, yeah. because a lot of people don't. Right. It's all, it's all circumstantial. It's all different, you know, situations and whatnot. So we do really well. And my daughter knows nothing but love and you know and that's the most important thing you know yeah so I, scheduling is whatever but you figure it out you figure it out but she is so loved by both of us and you know that's all that's all you really need to that, make sure. that's the number one what thing happens, yeah. i always say that it's just like you know i i you do love scary movies <laughs> sorry well, i was just looking around it's just kind here. of a little thing i don't always watch them yeah i do but there's I'm a lot lie, there's a lot of them yeah yep. it's either documentaries What's your favorite scary movie? I'm calling them scary movies. I mean, probably, I always say The Shining. It just sticks it's with me. It's just directed, like, everything, that movie. It's just that they don't make them like that anymore. No. But there's a lot of good ones. If you ever, do you, do you watch them? Sometimes. It's the only ones, like, I can stay awake for at night. Okay. Well, I have some that are quality. That okay. I can give you a list that you can avoid all the shit that's yeah. out there okay. that gets applauded by Rotten Tomatoes, which I have a thing for. Yeah. Everything's well, 99%. Well, yeah. Are they getting paid? 
I don't well, know. I, I mean, I'm, how could you say this shit is so good? I and know. you watch it and you're like, yeah, that was like a 63. <laughs> oh, so you don't agree with Rotten Tomatoes. I do not agree with Rotten Tomatoes. I think they get paid. Them. I think that somebody pays them. I think the studios have deals. Oh. There's something. There's something going that. on. I could see that. Yeah, okay. I do. I do. Yeah. And it's like the big critic, the big critics and all that. I, I, that's how I feel. You think And I think a- it's kind of skewed now because mm. the whole world is just in a different way. So like, oh, that person, let's. Let's give them a high score. Uh, okay, I could back without saying too much. Sure, you know what I'm saying. Yes, I know. What you know you're what I'm saying. talking about, Ryan? No, no, <laughs> I don't think you did. Uh, that's okay. Um, you know, I wanted to get into like you know childhood because your mom was a therapist. So she's okay. Not a not a behavioral therapist. Not a behavioral therapist. She doesn't have a degree, you know, as a therapist, but she has studied her whole life and she counsels and she specializes in sex and Whoa. you know. All of that stuff. So she taught you about that stuff when you were Oh, young? my God. But it's the opposite for me. All my friends want to know everything from my mom and always have. But for me, I'm like, I don't want to, I can't talk, I don't want to talk to you about no, this. No, I don't want it. I don't want to. It's like, you know, it's just this weird thing. But I can. And I'll be like, yeah, mom, like I totally, like I had sex with this guy. Like it's a very open relationship. Really? You can talk about all You tell your things. mom you had sex with a guy. Yeah. I mean, I have. Does she say, did you use a condom? <laughs> <laughs> She's say not old fashioned like that. No, <laughs> she's like raw dog it, girl. No, yeah, that's my mom. Give her the old R D, baby. Old R D. No, she's. It's just nice that she's so open, but she's way more into like tantra and like you know tantra. Yeah. Have you ever done tantra? No, I haven't either. Okay, I feel like a lot of people are interested in it, and they always want to talk to my mom about it, which is great. Like talk to my mom. I don't want to think about my mom and my stepdad. Like it's disgusting. I don't know why I feel the tantra is like, um, <laughs> they're just constantly um, owning having sex with you, um, <laughs> enjoying this. What is oh that? My God. Yeah, like... they're just constantly, you know, chanting. Yeah. Um, I just think that it's like, I think the belief and what what it actually is, the philosophy behind it, and all like the internal stuff that can come along with sex. I think that's kind of the. I think it'd be interesting to learn about. Yeah. I, I, I but think I have so. not. You have not. Not really. All right. I it's mean, my mom. But your mom know. has. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shouldn't go there. Shouldn't go there. Shouldn't go there. Well, not, she's, she's, she's you preaching imagine? it. She is preaching it. No, and I think it's great, and I I love it. Good for her. Are they still together? Your my fa- step not my stepdad and my mom have been together a long time. Right. And my parents have been divorced since I was nine. How did that affect you? Did it affect you at all? I think the first thing I said when they told me they were getting divorced was, "I get two Christmases." <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. But. Wait, weren't you Jewish? Yeah, my dad's Jewish, but he loves Christmas. So we would always celebrate Christmas. Yeah, we did too. We had a Christmas tree. You did? Because you're Jewish. I'm Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. But and you had a Christmas tree. Just- yeah, we had all that. My grandma would come down as Hanukkah claws <laughs> in her red suit. Aww, <laughs> ringing that's the bell. so cute. <laughs> They're not ringing the bell. That's like the That's uh, like um, a wonderful salvation. life. That's Salvation Army. <laughs> salvation <from> Santa. Army. <laughs> What is that? It is ringing the bell for money. It is. Like Phoebe did it on Friends. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp has been with me for a long time, and I think I know why. Because this uh, this podcast deals with a lot of mental health, um, people talking about their anxiety and depressions, and uh, we're all imperfect. We're all flawed, and that's the beautiful thing about life. And sometimes we get in ruts. Sometimes... Um, our path isn't as clear that's in front of us. We're not sure what we're going to do. We can't find purpose. This is where better help comes in. And it's so important, whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, your relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. The great thing about this is the stigma is going away, folks. So. You know, my dad, he doesn't go to therapy and, you know, I've been talking to him and I'm like, listen, everybody, so many people do this. You're not the only person who gets in ruts. You know, when we lost my sister, um, I finally got him into therapy and um, it's just important to know you're not alone. You're just not alone. And with better help, you can get your uh, therapist online. If you don't like your therapist, you change it like that. It's so easy. It's so much more affordable than looking up some therapist that you don't know and going, uh, yeah, and it costs you 
so much money to go in there. Look, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. It's so, so quick. Uh, and get matched with a licensed therapist, switch therapist anytime for no additional charge, period. It's entirely online, so it's convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. It takes seconds. And get matched with a licensed therapist. Switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash inside today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash inside today to get 10% off your first month. That's 10% off your first month. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. But you, you had a pretty good childhood. I think I don't know. I think I was. What do you, mean you don't know? I could tell you I didn't. Okay, <laughs> that's how easy I could say I didn't. <laughs> you didn't? No. Why? Well, I, I you don't want to hear my story. I mean, I can tell you some other time, but like you know, just a lot of dysfunction, a lot of uh, you know. Ryan's heard it a million times. <laughs> how but, fucked up on a scale from one to ten? Like one hundred and fifty times. How, how many? How fucked up on a scale from one to ten? I don't. I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, from what you've heard. I mean, it, it didn't sound great, but you turned out okay. I mean, you're able to talk about it, and uh, yeah, you no, had a Hanukkah clause. Yeah, mm-hmm. you did have a Hanukkah clause. Look, you know, the, the the tough thing for me was my dad used to say, "Oh, I'm not a good parent. I don't oh. put a roof over your head. Oh. I don't give you a hot meal every night." I'm like, "What am I a slave?" <laughs> <laughs> um, That's hard. So you had the kind of like a dominant uh, uh, alpha dad of sorts. It's just let's just say this. Uh, my brother wrote something about the family of what he remembered. He woke up, woke up with a nightmare, and he wrote stuff down. And, he, and when he got to me, he read it to me. He said, "And when we got to, and, and then there was Michael, and nobody paid any attention to him at all." Oh. And I go, and you know that what happened? Sums it up. Sums it up. And I remember I, I kind of cried a little, not a yeah. hard cry, yeah, but I didn't cry to him. But I didn't cry because they didn't pay attention to me. I cried because someone acknowledged mm. that. Yeah. So. But you were seen for the first time. Yeah, I was seen. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. yeah. I'm here all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm here for an hour, but <laughs> no, but it's you know, it's uh so that's why I say I, I know, you know, was my was it the right. worst? Right. No. No. Was there some good moments? Sure. But, but are you in therapy? Yes. yes. <laughs> Always in therapy and really worked on myself. Like good. So much better than I was because I acknowledged the reasons why I do that. And I go, oh. That's like, the, this is why you're doing that. Stop right. that. Stop. Right. You know? Yeah. Do you do that? You find yourself doing that or? Yeah. I mean, I think that also falls into like taking accountability and like all of that and even for your own actions and looking at yourself with all that shit. It's, 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 therapy is the best thing you can do, I think. And I was in therapy for the past few years and my therapist retired and I've been having a really hard time figuring out like where to go and like, it's like starting all over again, you know? And it's like, oh fuck! I got to start from the beginning, like this whole story I, I, again. That, that you know that, is, and I, I hear, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. It's like when you want to change therapists, and just they have to hear everything you've talked about. Right. So you built this relationship with this other person, but the reality is, once you go to that first one, and you talk the first time, you're like, okay, a lot of that was out. Second time, they're okay. Now he kind of gets me. Now mm-hmm. we can move on. So it, it does move faster. It seems overwhelming and daunting. But I, I think it, you know, but yeah. you're thinking of getting another therapist. Oh, yeah. I need, I need to. <laughs> what what makes you, like, what things do you do that you notice, like, you need to see therapist? You lash out? Do you <laughs> yeah. scream? I'm fucking, do I'm a real screamer. Do you punch walls? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? do you? No, I, you know, I just, I, I think there's, like, I've experienced, like, certain traumas, like, as I've gotten older, right? And I've noticed that my body, like, because your muscles store this trauma, and I've noticed that my body can go into the trauma, right? If I'm if I'm triggered by something, whatever it may be. And so for me, I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I need to work on this to figure out how to get through this and pass this trauma. So I literally don't physically react. Like, I will i won't be able to, like, eat, and I'll be, like, hunched over, and I'll be, like, in pain, like, nauseous. And I'm like, why can't I just talk myself out of this? And I really do believe that it is because your muscles store this memory. And so your memory 
is like connected the trauma. to everything. Oh, it's right. connected to everything, Your right? Brain, right. Yeah, and so and it might not have anything to do with what the trauma was about, but it's it's or I don't know, it probably has something to do with what the trauma was about, but and it just brings that out, and that's the hardest thing. And so I've heard a lot about is it EMDR? Yeah, I did it. You did it? I was going to say it. How was it? Mind-boggling. Like in a good I, way? I went in and I always told the story like once, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, 280 episodes, I can fucking say it. <laughs> Fuck you, Ryan. Fuck you, man. <laughs> um, so I I went to this place because I, I just needed to clear my head. My friend Zach Levi went yeah, there. He went there and he was like, he's like, I think you should go there. And I go, all right, fine expensive but i was like you know thank god i, I could afford it i'm gonna go mm-hmm. and there were one of the uh classes one of the uh therapists was an emdr specialist and i went in there and uh we did like a session and i go I, like i don't even know if i'm the right candidate for this I, i'm already doubting myself trying i gotta be great in this emdr session she goes we're not gonna do that today like okay and we talked and then the next session we're going going and she goes oh and we're not gonna do it today and i go okay and at the end of that session, she asked me something, and I m- mentioned something about my childhood, jokingly. I go, oh, yeah, and then and then this happened, and it was just like, you're stupid! And, you know, oh. and <laughs> Farley. And then I, I do that every <laughs> once in a while. And then and then he go, the therapist goes, she, she goes, I think we're ready to do this. I go, mm. uh, well, we got like 10 minutes left. And then she goes, no, are, are, do you want to do this now? I, th- I think we should do it. I go, okay. Don't do anything. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think of that moment. I want you to think around your surround about your surroundings, what you were doing, the feeling you had. And I want to, and I started to think about that and really go there. And she goes, then I want you to open your eyes and follow my finger. And I kept doing it, doing it. I'm like, this is bananas. What yeah. the fuck? But I stay with it. I said, I'm here for a reason. And I and she goes, okay, close your eyes. She, she goes, what do you see? And I, I said, blah, 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 blah. The second time I opened my eyes, hysterical. Crying. Crying. It, it came out of nowhere where I wasn't even trying. Tears were just flowing. I'm like, whoa, I can't do this with acting. You know? <laughs> and uh, it went on and on and on for about 20 minutes. And then I opened my eyes and she, and at the, she said, and it was kind of, uh, there was a through line. There was sort of it, the whole thing. You know, it started here, emotional, 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 build, build. And then by the end, I just, the therapist said, well, what are you thinking? And I go, and all that came to me was, I forgive them. Oh, wow. I forgive them. And I was crying and I was like, they didn't, they did the best that they could do. And it was not good. And I didn't deserve it and whatever. And it was so cathartic. Mm. and she says what it does is it's like a big tree in a forest that one big tree you just knock down so now with the mdr when you think about that because i would think about that story a lot and it, it did bother I me mean, obviously subconsciously bothered yeah me. it was just in there and i don't think about it anymore That's and if i do crazy. if i try to think of it it doesn't affect me. Wow. And that big tree also knocks down some little trees too. So it helps with other things. Uh-huh. But the more you do it, the better. So right. I, I recommend it. So when you say trauma, you don't have to go into it. But like, yeah. like what kind of trauma? Or do you not want to talk about it? I mean, it'll probably bring it up if I talk. No, just just things I've experienced, you know. And- <laughs> you should say you'll probably bring it up if I don't talk yeah, about it. No, like if I talk about it, I'm going to. Like a relationship cry. stuff? Some relationship stuff, yeah, for sure, you know, um, just just shit. Life. Just life that happens. You know, you get older and there's so many experiences that you go through. Not all are going to be great, mm-hmm. you know. Some are going to maybe leave a mark more than others. Um, but, yeah, it's just like, oh, fuck, like you're older and you're like, uh, like, for instance, I, I remember this is relating it to like work. Like I was up for a movie and the character had been through so much and was pregnant and whatever. And I lost the role to like a 20 something who had not, didn't have any of these experiences. And I'm like, so much has come from all these life experiences that I've had that I actually have a better understanding of how to bring it into my work. And I'm not like a schmactory type at all. You know, right, I'm you not. You let things go, but this one. Yeah. And it was like, 
Well, no, not even that. I just mean schmactery in the way of like, I'm going to be method and I'm going to like, you know, like, I don't, you know, I just do it. Like I have fun and I just go for it and I'd stay in the moment and I have a whole other whatever. Right. But yeah. But in this instance, I was like, huh, I'm older and I've learned so much. I can actually use this now, which you can't when you're 21. I'm sorry. Like, it's just. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's life. It's experience. It That's it's, why the older you get, the better. If you love the craft, the art, you're going to get better. Right as an actor sure the more much the more life you have right you yeah, know you can bring it to a role you and, know yeah and i yeah i certainly do that i think that's why i, I was able to do it because i would definitely channel certain mm -hmm. things i could go fucking dark right easily well yeah you were like a bad guy right oh yeah i mean in that <laughs> yeah but like yeah some of those moments man where i went fucking bananas mm. Dude, i'm telling you when you say me method I, i'm not say, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying i lost myself sometimes and i was like whoa whoa yeah it just you get i mean it felt great mm -hmm. but when you're not doing that thing but it's right. from experiences sure. and that's i think a lot of you know they always say comedians are really damaged yes most of them are and they are yes. they right are because there damaged. has to be some darkness you know to bring that humor because it overcompensates and yeah and they're brilliant and they're fucking hilarious but there has to be darkness there. I, th I feel like there are some that don't have it. Maybe they're not as funny. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. The jury's out on that Maybe one. Seinfeld. Maybe no, Se no, I had a great life. <laughs> I mean, everything was fine. <laughs> oh, my parents, they took me to yeshiva. <laughs> I was bar mitzvah and I made some money. I, I had a fine childhood You here. had it fine. I wonder if Larry had it fine. I Larry, like no. He, he was he, he was just, it was just neurotic. Yes. There were so much, so much craziness going on probably in his house, like mine. <laughs> you know, my mom's just off the wall. Oh, She's yeah. She's like on Valium doing imaginary snow angels in the carpet. Is that you right? Know? Oh, yeah. She was like. She was having a good time. She would come in the room and watch the match. She goes, she goes, all you do is watch these fucking bats. Scream! And he, 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 she leaves and stomps up the stairs in her nightgown at like four four p.m. And my dad's like, Jesus Christ! And I looked, kind of looked at him. I go, Gosh, man! I mean, it was shit like that all the time. I could, I could just remember my dad when he was there was a, that moment before he's going to give you a smack. He go. Like, when you saw that, you know, he's going to oh, lurch no. out at you. Oh, oh yeah. No. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we oh. didn't have like spanking in my house. No spanking. Like that. No. Well, it sounds like your mom did maybe with all that sex. Hey. I'm just kidding. Get hey. out of here. I'm just kidding around. <laughs> yeah, she saved it for the bedroom. Um, you. By the way, you're, you're kind of accident prone, aren't you? Yeah. Well, how do you know that? Well, because you got in a horrible car crash as a, as a kid. <laughs> Does that make me accident prone? Was it your fault? No. Okay, then you're well, accident prone. I was... <laughs> No, no, I was like, I've no, never. No. Hey, I got in a car wreck. It wasn't my that. fault. How does that make me accident? Yeah. Well, you were, you were you're, there. You're prone <laughs> to get an accident, whether or not they're yeah, your fault. I was fault. like, wait a minute. I was 14 in the back seat, but you know what? <laughs> that makes me accident prone. No, like tripping and fall. Like, sure. Oh, you do that. Yeah, but I was in a horrific car accident when I was 14. Yeah, because Rob told me that it was pretty traumatic. Yeah. Rob told you about my car accident? Or you asked? I asked. Oh, okay. I was like, that's really random. I asked. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I asked. Was, I said, you know, is there, you know, whatever. anything fucked like really bad that happened in her life we can talk about? <laughs> this message is sponsored by Discover. Did you know you could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails with online privacy protection? The latest innovation from Discover. Discover will help regularly remove your personal info, like your name and address from 10 popular people search websites that could sell your data and they'll do it for free. Activate in the Discover app. See terms and learn more at discover.com slash online privacy protection. No, but, but it was traumatic, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, I say that, but like I had a head injury, so I don't remember. I remember everything up until the point that uh, the accident happened. So I black out. I have no memory of the actual accident. Um, helicopter to the hospital, jaws of life, like all the good you stuff. You almost died? Yeah, I think so. I think like I lost, you know, the signs for a few minutes. Um, you went code blue? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Flatline for a second, maybe, or two. I 
I have the police report. I, I it was you like, say maybe <laughs> on all these things again. If I got in a horrible car accident and, and I was pronounced dead, <laughs> I would remember these things. <laughs> I wasn't pronounced I, dead. Okay. I mean, I feel like that would have been a big, you know. It's, yeah. a big, it's a big thing. <laughs> right. And I'm sorry for laughing during this Are you kidding? Amount. I have the best sense of humor okay. about everything. I'll continue laughing. Yes. Fucking you. car accidents are fucking hilarious. Yeah. I um, was in a car accident too. It was crazy. But, but well, how no, bad? No, no, I didn't. I, not, nothing really happened. Um, we were just lucky. We were like, yeah. we were going to Depeche Mode concert nice. on the way back home, 1991, <laughs> Violator Tour. <laughs> All I ever wanted <laughs> is here in my arms. <laughs> and we're going and Rick Camacho's tires were bald and it's raining and he's just going around like it, you know cars are coming this way we're going <gasps> and it just hydroplane kept going Ooh. into their lane and i saw this truck coming oh no and i go oh my god i grabbed my pillow and i went behind <gasps> jacob's jacob was in the passenger seat and i just i remember it took forever to hear i was like <gasps> oh and i go oh, oh god Oh, and all of a sudden it was just silence. Ooh, that's And I looked over and Jacob terrifying. had like blood on his head. No. And Rick was like, oh my God, oh my God. And the car was smashed right up to their legs. <gasps> like right an, a, another half of three inches and their legs would have been gone. Oh my God. And it was, it was traumatic. So you remember all uh, of I it. I remember See it that. because nothing, I, I remember exactly what happened because right. I, I didn't pass out. But you lost consciousness, were helicoptered out. Were you losing a lot of blood? I don't know. About or maybe the internal blood. organs? It was like, I think part of my head was like kind of scalped a little bit. Like I have a scar, but it's weird. It stops like right here at my hairline, so you can't see it. But it was like, yeah, like, you know, black eye scalped up here. Uh, I think I was in a coma for like a little tiny bit. Were you with your parents? No, 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 no. I was with um, my friends, my friend who was driving, who was 16, and we were dating these guys. That were older. They were not good guys. And um, partying on the beach, you know, Strawberry Hill, if you're familiar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Boons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, how about a little Bartles and James? Yeah, you, you know. know Bartles and James? <laughs> of course. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, you don't know shit. He's too young. <laughs> too young. These youngins. Yeah. So, like, we were all kind of partying. It was in Oxnard. And we were driving in the, in the dude in the passenger seat that was my friend's whatever was turned around on his knees tickling the guy i was with who was like laying on me in the back seat and at one point he just got his hand and he yanked the steering wheel the guy in the passenger seat we're on pch going you know pretty fast and he just yanked the wheel and we went over into oncoming traffic and we were in a little ford probe which is i don't know if they make them yeah, anymore they're really small and we hit like a big truck uh Maybe it was even like Did a anyone die? Mack truck. No, I th one guy is paralyzed. Um, God. The guy with me is mentally not well, I don't think. And uh, I think he's in jail for murder. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't know. Um, yeah. But anyway, it was very gnarly. Oh, my God. Did I black out? Was the your last friend thing, okay? Yeah. Like her foot was kind of like hanging off or something, but she was okay. Ooh. And this is a really <laughs> uplifting story. No, yeah, the last image I have is his hand on the steering wheel. And then that's what, all I remember. Why would he have done that? They were on drugs. Oh. Uh, Maybe speed. I forget. What definitely not Strawberry Hill. Definitely not. Yeah. No. Definitely oh not just God. that. Oh, my God. So you probably had to get, did you go through therapy with that stuff? Like rehabilitation no. or? Well, no. Like we were in the hospital and like I said, like it was a head injury. So I don't, I always wonder though. If at some point, is it just going to come back to me? Like, and that's a little terrifying. <laughs> like, if, is that just going to like sometime just pop up in my brain? I wonder brain? if the EMDR, I guarantee it would. Well, I, then I don't want to do it. Well, no, if you, if you, <laughs> no, you choose the incident, you choose the tra trauma. Oh, okay. You don't, I don't they, need to revisit that trauma. No, no. It sounds like you do not. I'm good with it. You don't need to go back. Yeah, into I don't need to go you know back. Into I, the it's car like accident. a horror movie. I want to go back to this time where I almost died. Yeah. Does it affect you? No. Why do you want to go back there? Right. I just do. <laughs> you know, it's kind of fucked. You don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. Not yeah. interested. But I'm glad you're alive. I am too. I am, I am too. I, I was mean, 14 and it really changed things for me. You know, I was hanging out probably with not the, with the wrong crowd. Yeah. And uh, it kind of set me on a different trajectory. So grateful Thank for God. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was brutal. Like I, now that I'm a parent, imagining like my parents getting that call that they're 14 year old, you know, in that mm -mm. massive of a car accident. I don't even, it's awful.
for, for some reason, it reminded me of the Murdoch what thing. did you see the documentary wait what no remind me is it the well the murder? A, a boating accident oh it's a boating accident. and the guy was really drunk and he shouldn't have been driving and they told him not to and he was like this kid he's probably 14 15 and he's driving the boat and they're drinking beer and then he smashes into this bridge and it kills one of the girls Ooh. and you know his dad's the biggest lawyer in the town and everybody's scared of him and he says comes into the hospital right after and all the kids are in the hospital he goes in there he's like you're not going to mention who was driving the boat <gasps> nobody mentioned who's driving the boat and then uh it, then he starts to pin it on. it's it's have you seen the documentary wait he pins it on someone else he tries to just oh my god this is a netflix documentary that will blow oh my your god. mind okay i'm gonna watch you it. have to watch yeah, it i'm gonna watch it it's fantastic Oof. so so yeah, you've had some trauma in your life, but like <laughs> uh, again, you know, I think that makes for a, a better person. You're sort of like, hey, I've been there, I've I've done that, I've sure. had this in my life, and look, I'm still here, I'm still doing. Do you do you still love acting? <laughs> did I ever love act? No, oh, well, <laughs> I, I do. Did you? No, no, no. In all fairness, I loved like when I wanted to get into it. I was in the drama program in high school. I loved it, loved it. The plays, everything. I've loved everything I've done. Like. The shows, I'm so grateful for them. I don't love the business. I, you know, I think I am so blessed that I get to do that. And I've, I, it's such a weird question. I know what you're saying. To it's answer. like you're grateful. You're so appreciative for everything you've, you've gotten, you've received, you've yes. worked hard for, yes. all that. But, I do love it. I love when I get to do it and I get to work doing that. But it's that. not everything to you now. No, I mean, I have a kid. That's everything to me. Things I, change. Purpose. I'm the type of person, I am mom first, always, no matter what. I put that above everything else. I've passed on things because my kid's the most important thing in the world. I love it. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, well, yeah, I love it. I, I love doing it. And when I can do it, it's awesome. It's so much fun. And I'm so lucky I get to do it. Right. But, but mom is everything. I, I just, I think something happened with me too, where I, I just, like five years ago, I did a series and then after it, I just sort of was like, eh, I just, I don't know if I love it. Maybe I just need a break. Mm -hmm. Then I took a break and then it got a long, longer break. Mm -hmm. Then I did a little thing and then a little thing. And I was like, ah, I don't know, was it 14 hours a day fun? I don't <laughs> well, right, because there's that side of it and you don't want to ever sound like you're complaint or no what? i just you know it's but like and then once i'm a mom and i went back to work when she was three years old and i was on like a two-hander and in every scene and i'm like oh my god how can i do this because you are sometimes 16 18 hour days mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of other things that go into it which it's harder on your personal life and if you have a kid um and i always joke i'm like oh you know i always dated co-stars because you're not going to see anybody else. <laughs> it's true. But, people say, well, I mean, why yeah. do actors date actors? And you're like, well, because we're on set all day. That's the only people we meet. Right. And then we're like, all right. How many co-stars do you think you've dated in your life? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Would you say A, three, B, seven, <laughs> C, more than seven? I would say D, all of them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I have had two public relationships that were co-stars. Right. Everybody knows that. Do they? <laughs> well, one you had a kid with. Oh, yeah. I guess that gives that one away. <laughs> Jumper, which is a great movie. <laughs> oh, thanks. That was so much. I oh, it's great. I love Don't doing you love that Jumper? Movie. I never saw it. Oh, you're, what? You're a fuck. <laughs> this is the last god. <laughs> Why wouldn't you say Star Wars, though? I wasn't in Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what we know him from. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> have you ever had situations where you're dating your co-star and it's just not going well on set now? It's just a weird vibe. <laughs> and you're like, fuck. Well, Adam, you know, I obviously Adam and Brody and I dated on the OC and we broke up like right before the end of the show. Oh, perfect. Yeah. You know, the timing was everything. And we had to do the last, I want to say couple months maybe. But... We got along really well, um, and I would say it was the best. Maybe it wasn't even a couple months. Maybe it was a couple weeks, but it was like the best version of it because I'm sure it could go Arrive. south. Yes, yeah, I'm sure. I hear that. Um, yeah, it's just, I, I, I've never. I, I did that in Germany once. I was doing this movie that no one will ever see. Um, <laughs> don't ask me. I was going to say, no, what don't. is it? No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> don't you even? Oh, I know. Ryan. You know what it is? Yeah. It's, don't it's, tell me. No, no, no. It's it's. It, don't even get. What is it, Ryan? Rave Macbeth. 
Okay. It was a I movie that <laughs> looked, it was, it should have been good, but then we had to dub the entire movie. Oh, they, no. they lost the audio and now it's just a joke. You they watch it. They lost the audio? Yeah, it was all gone. I had to loop. I, I was the lead. I had to do every line and it ruined. I, I was in there going because I had an obligation. I was like, I don't want to fucking be here. I this, I can't believe I'm doing oh, every line. God. My performance, I'm emotional and screaming and drug <laughs> induced. And like, I'm going, oh, it's like, fuck <laughs> you. Oh my God, that's brutal. But anyway, I, I, I was right away. I, we were, my co-star and I were really attracted to uh, each other. Her name was Nikki Acock. She passed, just passed away. What? Yeah. She Why? just passed How? away. It, it shocked me. I believe it was leukemia. Oh my God. And I hadn't been in touch with her for years, but I, I adored her. I, she was so sweet. That's we terrible. got along so well. And you know what? We It happened and then we kind of were like, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm t in my 20s and I'm like, you know, and she, yeah. you know, and you know, we started, but it ended up working okay, but it could have been a disaster. Mm. It could have been a disaster, but we, we were both cool about it. And, That's good. Yeah. You so, just hope they're cool people. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, I mean, do you have sort of a, a propensity for going out with actors? Um, What does that mean? <laughs> uh, You know, just like, is this, do you? Does it have to be an actor or a producer or someone in the business? No. It doesn't. <laughs> no. I look. No. <laughs> no. It does not. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> no, of course not. There is the thing that like they understand like what exactly you do. Yeah. You know, and they mm -hmm. get it. But and look, yes, my track record, they're you know, I have dated actors. Um You know what's funny? I haven't. You haven't? I don't know. I haven't dated ever. Though. I mean, yeah. No, that's not true. I have. Forget it. I have. <laughs> I just thought about it. I was like, yeah, you did. No, yeah. But not a long ton. Long term or a lot? Oh, long term? No. Okay. Uh, go on. It's you. <laughs> oh, okay. Baby, uh... it's you. I've been waiting for. Remember that song? All of my life. Yeah, all of my life. Stephen yeah. Bishop. Sure. How old are you? 41. Are you really? Yes. Get lost. Mm, okay. Bye. 41. <laughs> When's your birthday? August. August, so you're a Leo. No, I'm a Virgo. I'm at the end. Oh, I don't know anything about Virgos. Okay. Anyway. Moving on. <laughs> um, all right. So, yes, I understand the whole world. They understand your schedules and all that. But um, and yeah, especially, it, yeah. Yeah. But every time it's like, oh, I'm not going to date another actor, you know, but you just, you, the people you surround yourself with. I think director, like, I love that aspect and, and they understand it as well. But it's really just about people. And people you meet, and if you like vibe well or Absolutely. whatever, you're that's right. all it's about. You're right. It's just the people you meet more. You you're at work a lot of the time, and so those are the people you spend your time with. That's yeah. all. That's all that it is. Did you, I know you went to Notre Dame? I did. High school. Yes. And you you went to school with you know Remy Malik, who I think Rami. went to U of V. Uh, yeah, he went I, to where I grew up in Evansville, Indiana. Yes, he did. Yeah, he went there. Yes. I tried to get him on the podcast. He, he hasn't returned my call. <laughs> uh, I said, hey, we're both Evans. He didn't care. <laughs> Kirsten Dunst, mm -hmm. uh, Catherine McPhee. Yep. Do you talk to any of those girls, women? If I see them, we're okay, always so. Okay, so you're not close. You're never close. No, like not super close. We were friends in high school for sure. Rami and I were the, out of those three, Rami and I were the closest. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, because we we were in the same friend group. We were in drama together. Actually, Kirsten and um, Kat were in drama as well at the same time. I mean, Kirsten was already working and like off shooting things and stuff, so she wasn't always there. Um, but they were always so nice. And Kat was like the cutest thing ever and had the most amazing voice. And it's so cool to see everything they've done. I mean, Rami's right. done all right, you know? I mean, did, did he win the Oscar? <laughs> yeah, he did. He won the Oscar he sure for... Did. Uh... He was always fucking amazing like even in high school in the plays like we would do the plays together we did the crucible together he's an incredible actor do you think um the oc will ever have a movie <laughs> a movie yeah because they're doing movies with all these shows doing now. movies i feel like it could be like a limited series i'm gonna throw that out there would Let's you do, do it yeah of course like oc like josh schwartz is my family like yeah I, he, he cast you in another thing a couple things yeah but we're also like he's one of my best friends he's like my brother yeah we're so close i would and stephanie savage as well like i always say i would do anything they would just be like you want to do this it doesn't matter what it is i'd be like okay yeah when do i where where do i go <laughs> um but my pitch is a limited series let's do eight maybe ten probably eight episodes uh, and call it a day would everybody come back you think I'm trying to, we're trying to like break some people down to see. 
Oh, so you're already in on this? No, I mean, no. You are. No one, you are. We have we have a few hard no's, so it's not going to happen probably. But you won't even tell me the hard no's, will you? I mean, if you Google it, I'm sure the hard no's are there to be. The read. hard no's are there. <laughs> I love that you did commercials for like Pepto Bismol. They should have had me do that. Because you need it often? Maybe. <laughs> Not all I the time. I remember the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you like farts? Um, do I like them? I mean, are you cool with Okay, them? how do you feel about that in relationships? Open farting. Um, I I don't know. I don't I don't think f- I, I I don't know. I, I think it would kind of I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I don't, don't I like, like it. it. Yeah, because it makes it more attractive. Yeah, no, like you hide that shit. Yeah, but if an occasional like blast comes from the office, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> that's kind of funny. But like, just keep it out of the bedroom. Keep it out. You know, I don't sure. want to roll you into There's an enchilada and, <laughs> and like blast. <laughs> you know, There's I'm not a time gonna... and a place. Yeah, I just think that you know, I'm not. I don't ever. I don't like sharing that stuff. No, you're a you're a close the door, leave me alone. Uh, yeah. You disappear. You're one of those women who disappear and like, where'd they go? <laughs> uh, they must be pooping in the third bathroom on the third floor. Right. No, but we talk about this a lot on Broad Ideas. It's like <laughs> when you go away on a trip with someone for the first time, right? How are you going to, how is that going to work out? That's the biggest concern. Where are you going to shit? I know what you do. What do you do? Here's what I would do. What would you do? I'd probably say, hey, the pool looks really sweet. Why don't you head out to the pool? I got to take care of a few things. Interesting. Or you say, hey, I'm gonna go check with the front desk. I'll be back. I wanna see if they have any massages. And then pow! <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, come back and go, you're like, what about the massages? I go, ah, oh, they weren't there. I just. <laughs> but what if they wanna go with you? See that, it's no, 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 <laughs> you stay. <laughs> you, you stay there. <laughs> I wanna take care of this. I wanna surprise you. Well, it's not a surprise anymore. You already told me. I know. <laughs> But I just want. It's something I have to do on my own. All right, I gotta take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing, man. It's a thing. All right, this is called shit talking with Rachel Bilson. This okay. is rapid fire. These are my top tier patrons. Ask questions. Uh, Patreon.com slash inside of you. I love you guys. They support the show more than I can. Awesome. Just to clarify, it's different from the segment we were just doing Uh-oh. on shit. <laughs> oh yeah. It is. It's not. It's, it's not, not that. literal shit. Just, yeah. No. You're you're very easy to talk to. Well, thanks. I mean, it's really easy. <laughs> is is it not normal? Well, sometimes it's like pulling I, teeth. I mean, I know. I mean, I'm we had kidding. one um, the other day. That was just like. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard, right? Oh, okay, so yeah, it was just no, no. Uh, we always have like questions to fall back on if need be. Yeah, like, I know an arsenal. Um, Leanne says, "Who has been the one person that always believed in you, and have you ever paid it forward?" Aw, you know what? I would say my mom because that's the obvious answer, but I'm going to give credit to my best friends, Olivia and Leah, because they have got me through everything and they're my lifelines. And now Olivia, my co-host, and Leah sometimes fills in and she's off doing a movie. So, And your dad also said, if this is true, what you should go into acting. My dad saw me do the play I did with Rami and he was like, you know what? You're kind of kind of actually good at this. Do you want to like do it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. And then that's all right. Yeah. So he was sort of there. He was sort of there. Little Lisa, what's the worst job you've ever had? Well, I had one. I can't say that. I had a job. I wouldn't say it was the worst job. Okay, sorry. I was a hostess <laughs> at Sicily, this restaurant in the valley, for a short time. But I, my first job I ever got was for a Raisin Bran Crunch commercial, and I had to mm. dance for twelve hours, and you only saw my butt in the commercial, and after. I had to like, I couldn't, I couldn't move. I was very, I'm not a dancer, you know? So like you I can hated dance. that day. That day was horrible. No, it was good. But then after it was bad. In other words, you were in pain. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. That was my worst job. You know, I got fired from McDonald's for. What? For taking, you know, that how at the end of the, sh- at the end of the, the, it's closing. McDonald's does close. <laughs> and I was just taking some leftover uh, McRibs. <laughs> that were in I've there. never heard anyone like I love McRibs. I've never tried a McRib. Well, there were like six left and I'm like, we're close. I'm like, fuck, I'm putting this in a bag. I'm gonna bring it. But my dad was picking me up and I went out there and the guy, the manager goes, Michael, what's in the bag? 
What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> I go, John Doe knows the upper hand. John Doe's got the upper hand. Don't look in the box. <laughs> and um, I go, oh, it's just uh, old McRibs. <laughs> and he goes, what's the policy? Um, I, I don't know. I, they, they were going to go in the trash. Come here, please. And we went, and it was my third ride up because I didn't mop the floor in arches. That's <laughs> what? I swear on my on my family's life. They made me mop the floor in arches, like dip, ring, <laughs> arches, dip. R- I'm not kidding. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, I got written up for that. I got written up for <laughs> saying something to a customer like, uh, "I was like, I'll have the uh, fr- ah, fry. Fries not worth it. Fries, fries aren't good today, or something like that." Like, <laughs> they, they're like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm just I'm looking just out listen. for it." And they're like, Don't, "What are you doing? Oh my what are god. you like, fucking?" Zagats. <laughs> I mean, all right, little uh, Julie Church. That's Julie with one eye. Were you on board with the direction the OC took after one of the most iconic character deaths in teen drama? Was I on board with it? I mean, that's a question. Yeah, we got we got Che, also known as Chris Pratt. I got to go to Brown. <laughs> no, it was you know I just watched the whole series back um, for this rewatch podcast and. Uh, it's really hard when Marissa dies. I mean, I couldn't watch it forever. And Misha and I wound up watching it together like uh, during an interview for the podcast. And I realized like, oh man, it was a bummer when she left. But the fourth season, it kind of it's kind of like we were, everyone was just having fun and it was funny and a lot lighter once you got through the grieving stuff that I really enjoyed where they went with it. And the OC podcast is coming to an end. Yes. You're having Ben McKenzie on the podcast. Yeah, that's right. We that's got exciting. Ben. So listen to, and it's called the, o- to the, to the OC, OC bitches. bitches. Right. Yeah. And the new podcast, Broad Ideas, yes. which should have been broadcast. Damn it. You know what? what? I'm still going to use it. We're going to put that in as Why don't you do a little snippet? Segment. This is called broadcast. Yeah, broadcast. Okay, we're going to answer questions from this. Yep. I like it. Uh, Sophie M. Quickly. God. Can you tell us any audition or set stories from your time on Nashville playing Alyssa Green? Any stories? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it, what, I, I, so I played, I had, you know, a few episodes. I forget how many I did. And I was going on Nashville, but my character was like, I want to say she was a lawyer. Uh, maybe she wasn't. She was something that wasn't an entertainer. Right. And I said, well, I'm going on Nashville. I have to sing. So they literally found a way to write in where I got to sing a song, which is so weird and random. Were you nervous? I was, I was, ner- I wasn't, I was nervous, but I wasn't as nervous because you go in and you record it before and then you're just on set. So that went great. Okay. But there's amazing singers on that show. So I was like, oh, here I am, like carrying a tune. Um, but it was fun. Super Sam, the OC dealt with a lot of big topics for teenagers and never seemed to shy away from anything that was too real. Do you have a favorite storyline or topic they tackled? Um, I think I like a lot of the things they tackled. I just love Olivia Wilde so much. So when they did the whole um, uh, story with Marissa and Alex, I thought that was cool. And like, it wasn't, you know, there was a big thing because it like Fox like had a thing where like, you can't show them kissing too much or whatever, which is a bummer. And I wish if they could redo it now, you know, they could do a little more with it because it was a great storyline. This has been a real good time. Yeah, this was great. I'm happy it worked out finally. Sorry. Yeah, I know. You so, weren't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy. No, I mean scheduling. Scheduling you have, you have was a kid, like, yeah. You have I mean, the podcast. Anything else coming up? Just the new podcast. The new, yes. So Broad Ideas. Broad Ideas. Yes. And when does it come out? Broadcast Now, segment. it's out. It's out. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you know. Every Monday. Dude, you should, I should dude, come on. Dude, we've had, come, will you come on? Come on. We've had really good people. I, I would love to come on. It'd be yeah. hilarious. You should look up. You can ask me like... anything. Oh, I will. Oh, you can. Broadcast. You'll be the first broadcast segment. Do, so there you right? go. Full circle. Do you want <laughs> Do you want your daughter to be an actor? No. But she's already like shows all the signs. Like what? She's so <laughs> animated and Mom. She performs listen. and exaggerates. And like if she's reading a book with exclamation, she's like but what do you mean, Timmy? Like, it's like full on. <laughs> she has it in her. I mean, both of her parents, you know. Are actors. No, we are actors. Do you think you'll ever get married again? I was never married. I've never, never been married. Do you think you'll ever get married? <laughs> I don't know. 
What I mean, is this something I mean, you have a kid? I do have I mean, a kid. I mean, usually people get married to have a child chi- sure. children. To yeah. have a children. To have a children. <laughs> to have a child. I do have a children and I think that I you know, yeah, like that stuff, the legal stuff, it's like, do I do you need to deal with that? Of course I've always I love clothes. Like I would love to pick out a dress, but like I don't need to get married. You know, I wear dresses but, all the time. You know, why not? Like, you know, I guess in everybody's mind, you're always you proverbial you is always thinking, you know, it'd be nice to have everybody there. And then, you know, I think my friends would be like, wow, he, he actually did it. <laughs> he actually, oh my God. Or like, this is, and it's just like, hey, I found my person. And, you know, hey, we're not, you know, everything. Yeah. It's just like, what else is there? You don't, you don't right. get with somebody to get married. You, you're with them. And then when there's nothing else, you're like, huh, you want to get married? I mean, like, we're what's already that? like, oh, what? I, I don't that. want that much. I've always said I do not want to walk down an aisle and everyone looking at me. That makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah. It makes sense that I'm an actor. I know. They would probably look at you <laughs> if we walked down the aisle. It's <laughs> eyes on you. <laughs> That's for That's sure. That's what I'm saying is like I would never, I just don't, I don't like that much attention. I don't like being the center of attention. Really? Yeah. Never have been. You yeah. always like the, you know, the person you're with, let them be the center of attention. Like, because you, you're, you're, you're quick. Yeah. I tend to be. But I, I. I don't know. I mean, I was always performing, so maybe I I don't want to be looked at at a wedding. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> fine, just no, invite no one. I'm going to wear a sheet. Wear a sheet. That's how the Jews do it. That's right. They do it with Listen, a sheet. That's right. They sure do. <laughs> they do. All about it. Um, all right, this has been awesome. Thanks for coming on the Thanks podcast. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Thank you, Rachel, for joining us. I appreciate that. Uh, I would totally marry her. <laughs> um yeah, she's, uh, you know, she's just, she's a woman. She's, she's, she, she, she knows her shit. Yeah. She has her shit together. As far as I know, she has her shit together. I mean, we see what we see, mm-hmm. but we don't always know. No, I mean, what, what we deal she with. appears to be out in the world doing things. Yes. And doing a good job of them and being, uh, She's confident in what she's doing. Yes, in and, life. and talented and, and, and well regarded. And uh, I at, think at home and at work. Yes. She has children. Mm. Yes. That's no easy feat. That's no easy feat. I'm, t- I'm complaining about my dog. And it's like, <laughs> it's, doesn't it? You don't have to. I mean, your dog's pissing and shitting everywhere. I just think about the kids pissing yeah, and shitting everywhere. Yeah. Changing those diapers every. Well, I don't think they're that young anymore. Uh, if you didn't listen to, uh, I'm not going to repeat it, but uh, the Inside You podcast, uh, Inside You Online store, and all that other jazz, just rewind and you get all the information where I'm going to be, where I'm going, all that. Are you doing anything? You you've been traveling a lot, Ryan. I have been. Yeah, I've been been all over. My sister's wedding, and uh, I've been everywhere. I've been man. everywhere, man. Uh, yeah, I'm going back up north. See my parents again. My aunt's getting married. Oh, nice. Uh, Aunt Taya's? Aunt. Uh, <laughs> Auntie Taya's? Auntie Taya's. Auntie Taya's. My mom's sister is getting married. Uh, a lot of people getting married. Your sister got married. Your aunt's getting married. Aunt's getting married. Um, it's a lot going on. It's a lot. Oh, yeah. oh, then, yeah. Then uh, I have a friend in LA getting married Jeez. in September, and we're going, this bachelor party is going to be in August. Hey, Ryan, guess what? What? I'm not getting married. Oh, Here are bummer. the shout outs patreon.com slash inside of you. Couldn't do it without you, and I I thank you. I wish I could read each person's name 100 times. Um, A lot of these people have been with me from the beginning. I mean, from the beginning of Patreon when I started doing it, and they've stuck with me. And sometimes I get a little, you know, worried. I'm like, uh, are they liking their my the box that I send them? Are they liking the 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 notes? And it's it's a lot of stress. But um, I hope you guys are digging that. I hope you know. I I really personalize each note and take the time and um. You know, Joe and I pack the boxes. I tell them what to put in there. And uh, it's hard. My house is full of merch. <laughs> and uh, I, every time I want to get new merch, I have no room to put it. You got your own merch and you got um, merch that you bought? Yeah. I get, also, you got, yeah, you just got, there's a lot of merch. Let's there's always new honest. merch. There's new merch. Um, here are the shout outs. Here are the names. The lovely people, Nancy D. And by the way, thank you for messages that you sent. Um, whether I read it on Google Mail or in the Inside of You podcast, um, sort of uh, email base where people chime in. Um, and also, if you order something from the Inside of You online store, make sure you there's a message where you could say, please do this. Because sometimes I sign something, they go, oh, I didn't want it signed to me. I'm like, how was I supposed to know that? And then they want a refund. And I'm like, God, I'm just sending so much stuff back. 
and I don't know how to fix it. I'm just like, write a message. It's going to be autog- either s- just my signature maybe. But, you know, there's some things they want personalized, which I always personalize them. And, you know, there's a message thing where you can message on the thing. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about okay. that anymore. Nancy D, Leah S, and Kristen K. Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Raj C, Joshua D, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Mike E, L down Suprema, 99 more, Santiago M, correct, Chad W, Leon P, Maddie S, Belinda N, correct, Dave, Dave Hall, I love Dave Hall, every, every time I get to Dave Hall, hey Michael, Thanks, Dave David. Hall, I really enjoyed your podcast, um, but you're an asshole. For trying to do my voice in our soul i love dave i've said that a million times i hope you love me dave sheila g brad d ray how did uh correct tab of the t tom n talia m betsy d correct angel m rhiannon c Corey k dev Maxon. michelle a jeremy <laughs> irons c Brandy D, Yavor, Joey M, Eugene N, Leah, Corey, Jake B, Angela F, Mel S, Christine S, Eric H, Shane R, correct, Andrew M, Tim L, Amanda Double R, yes, Jen B, Kevin E, Stephanie K, Jorel Jammin, J, and Leanne P, no, F, you, C, no, if I said Leanne, Jam and J, and Leanne J, correct, oh. Luna R, Mike F, Stone, Gossard, no, remember oh. how we remember Stone, the famous Wonders of the World, Stone, <sighs> Henge, Stone Age, Stone Henge. Brian Stone L, Kendall L, Meredith Stone. I, Kara C, Jessica B, Kyle F, Marisol P, yes. Estevan G. Yes. Kaylee J. Brian A. Ashley F. Mary Louise L. Romeo B. Veronica Q. Frank B. Jen T. Nikki L. April R. Cassie B. And Derek N. Thank you, newcomers who have joined Patreon and support us. We love you. And uh, there's not much I could say other than thanks for listening again. And we're on strike here, the SAG. You know, so right now, thank God I had a lot of these pre recorded oh, yeah. before the strike. Yeah. And it's going to be hard to get guests. I'm thinking, but you know, as long as they can't, they just can't talk about future projects. I don't even remember the last time. <laughs> these these are so far in the can. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they're in the can. Thank God I did that. Right. There were so many. There was. I was going to do more too, and I was like, I can't. At one point, we had twenty. We had twenty. Because <laughs> I, I knew you were leaving town. To I was leaving town, but I didn't know there was going to be a strike, and so we're good for a little while. Yeah. But um, I'm going to have to start getting guests here in about a month. Mm. So we're good for now. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry I didn't shower this morning. Ryan, did you shower? I did. You look like you showered. Well, because you said, "Can you come over now?" and I said, "Yeah, I'm gonna shower." You said you were naked. You're getting some clothes on. Wait, well, I, I was. I was still in my jammies. Do you wear pajamas? <laughs> just like it's a t-shirt that I was. Do you wear, Do you just walk around in your underwear? No. What do you walk around in? It was just a t-shirt and sweat shorts. Okay. Sweat You're shorts. not an underwear walking around guy. No. I'm Michael Rosenbaum. In the Hollywood Hills in California. I'm Brian Taylor from the same place. <laughs> A little wave to the camera. We love you guys and uh, be good to yourself. Mm-hmm.